Greetings in the name of Christ and welcome to St. Philip Presbyterian Church's Thursday devotional. My name is Reverend Alyssa Connor and I'm one of the pastors. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your word and ask that you inspire us, fill us with your spirit, help us to hear you. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue on in the Unraveled series by Sanctified Art with a story about a ruler, a subversive woman, a caring sister, an adoptive mother, and a baby in a basket. Please listen for the unraveling of rules, plans, and control in this passage. A reading from Exodus. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word in Hebrew used for basket here appears in one other place in scripture, and that's in Genesis, where it actually refers to Noah's Ark. This gives us quite a parallel between the Ark preserving life and this basket doing the same for Moses. When your plans for your children unravel, there is an intense vulnerability. We all wish we could control the world and make it safe. And fundamentally, children or not, most of us have a desire to control the world around us. The decisions and trajectories of those around us. Pharaoh seeks to do this with disastrous results. Moses' mother and sister and Pharaoh's daughter do this with the limited power that they have. This desire is often intimately tied with the willingness or not to embrace our own vulnerabilities. Pharaoh seeks to mitigate his vulnerability. The women in the story embrace theirs and rely on one another. I am sure that Moses's mother wished that she could keep her child safe. Putting him in the basket in the reeds was a desperate act, one that breaks Pharaoh's rules one that puts all of them at risk, one that relies on the mercy of someone in power to save her baby. Now, we don't really know if she planned for Pharaoh's daughter to find Moses. We don't know if Pharaoh's daughter had a particular reason for taking in this child. We don't know exactly how Pharaoh reacted, but we do know that in a world where all of the plans about her child's future were unraveling, in a world where she couldn't control the danger, in a world of unraveling plans, Moses's mother, sister, and adoptive mother embraced their vulnerabilities and his and relied on hope that the future would be better. 
It was a hope of action and vulnerability. I invite you to join me this Sunday and hear more about this story and about when our plans for our children, for others, and for the world unravel. In the meantime, I invite you to reflect about what you try to control about the world and what you try to control about the actions of others. What would it be like to let that go? What would it be like to trust others with your vulnerability? What would it be like to let those things unravel? I invite you to pray. Holy God, help us to feel your presence when our plans for others, when our plans for our lives, when our control unravels. Help us to feel your peace, to know that you are with us, to rely on one another, to embrace our vulnerabilities, to know that even when we do not have control, you are by our side. In your name we pray, amen.